Joining us right now is a very special guest, Meghalaya Chief Minister, Mr. Conrad Sangma, uh, is with us here on Mirror Now as we bring to you the biggest of the voices uh, on how to fight this pandemic and what should be the way forward as we look to relax the lockdown in a graded manner uh, and really see how to restart the economic activity. Now, as you know, viewers, Northeast has seen a relatively lower number of cases. In fact, Meghalaya saw its first case only on the 14th of April. By then, the other states had seen a far large number of cases being reported for coronavirus. Uh, so, relatively speaking, uh, Northeast and especially Meghalaya have been more immune to the number of cases that have happened. But that doesn't mean that they will not have to be on guard. Mr. Sangwa, good evening. Thank you for joining us. A uh, bit of a technical issue there to get through to you. But thank you for your patience. Uh, Meghalaya has not seen too many cases. But of course, a series of precautions have to be taken and preparations have to be made. Can you give us insights on the level of preparedness that your state has now? Yes, um, in fact, uh, in a lot of exercise has uh, gone in uh, to prepare for, uh, you know, what uh, would be coming. And um, uh, Meghalaya has been one of the states which started preparations very early. In fact, uh, March 16th, uh, we were having our assembly session and we uh, shut it down. We shut down schools and we had a number of, uh, you know, uh, curfews imposed uh, way before it was done in any other part of the nation. I think it paid off to some extent because we could uh, contain, uh, you know, the kind of movement of the people. But of course, we had one case here, which then, of course, was a was a case which was uh, related to medical, uh, you know. No. So therefore, it was a very uh, large secondary and primary contact list. So we had our challenges, but I think overall the state is uh, doing its best. As you had correctly said, uh, you know, the challenges are so huge that one cannot say what will hit you when. So I think the only thing we can do is really do our best, be prepared, uh, you know, hope for the best and uh, really prepare for uh, all different kind of eventualities. Are there any concerns about citizens of the state who may be in other states right now, stranded in other states? Um, you know, there's a huge issue that the rest of the country is facing as far as migrants are concerned, Mr. Sangma. Yes, I think uh, this is now the next challenge for all the states. Um, and especially the states in the Northeast, where we have been able to contain the, the spread to some extent within our states. Uh, now with uh, our own people from the state coming back from other parts of the country, uh, is going to be a big challenge. Um, and I think uh, for states like Meghalaya, the numbers are slightly lesser compared to others. So we will have about close to 13,000 to 15,000 people uh, coming in. But uh, that in itself is a, is a challenge for us, and especially keeping in mind that a number of them will be in red zones. So I think uh, that is the next big challenge for all the states. But uh, are you prepared? I believe you've got five different kinds of quarantine centers that have been uh, prepared. But obviously, like you said, now, you know, thousands of them will be coming back in terms of healthcare infrastructure. Is there anything that the state needs? Uh, well, uh, uh, number one, we have ensured that uh, there is a pre-registration done by everybody who's coming in. So they have to download the necessary apps. Uh, they have to inform us. Uh, accordingly, we have also informed the, the families, the localities, the societies involved. Uh, so there has been a lot of exercise that has gone to actually uh, gone in to prepare for this particular situation. And uh, we're hoping that these preparations and these uh, background work and initial preparations will help us uh, manage it in a better manner. Uh, of course, we are uh, encouraging home quarantine because uh, it will be very difficult for us to put them in institutions. Uh, except for the cases which uh, so, show some kind of uh, symptoms or if there are any tests, uh, you know, that we do and some positives come out, except those cases, majority of them will be asked to home quarantine for at least 14 days. Okay. Um, the other aspect, uh, and this is something that Mira now has now been focusing on, which is to say, from here on, what else do we need to do to, you know, restart the economic engine, uh, to restart the economy as we look at the third version of lockdown. Now, obviously, a pandemic hits the tourism industry the most, something that, uh, you know, Meghalaya is hugely dependent on. What is the plan of action there uh, as far as reviving tourism is concerned? 
Yes, I think uh, economic activity has been hit um, everywhere. And of course, uh, Meghalaya is no different. And uh, tourism, as you said, is uh, one integral part of our uh, economy. It provides a lot of uh, employment uh, you know, to a large number of our people. So keeping that in mind, uh, we do see a lot of challenges that are uh, on our way ahead for tourism sector especially. Uh, but we are hoping that uh, we will be able to adapt to this. I think uh, what is important to note is um, that crisis will also lead to opportunity. And if you look at it, uh, we normally in an year we have, uh, India has about 22 million uh, outbound tourists. So these outbound tourists who used to go to uh, other countries, I think we'll look at uh, places within the nation, within the country to go to. And I think if a strategy can be developed where safety can be uh, put uh, as a priority for the, uh, for the tourist as well as for the people who are here, I think if a strategy can be developed around that, uh, I'm sure we can convert this crisis into an opportunity. But uh, is there any internal assessment that's been done about the impact so far? Because we're still a few months away, Mr. Sangma, even for domestic travel to, you know, uh, restart. Yeah, I think we all need to understand that, uh, you know, uh, which we have been saying a number of times that uh, till a vaccine comes out, we are living in the corona age. And therefore, I think we need to adapt to it uh, and make necessary changes in our lifestyle or in governance or, uh, you know, in economy and in business. So therefore, in these situations, technology will play an important role. Uh, uh, you know, advanced planning will play an important role. Uh, policy adaptation will play a very important role. So therefore, uh, we as a government, in fact, we have formed an economic task force. And, uh, you know, different uh, experts have been put on board in there, especially to look at sectors like agriculture, horticulture, uh, you know, entrepreneurship, um, infrastructure verticals, uh, the tourism vertical. So therefore, we are already working on it and planning. And uh, it is very important that I think um, every state and in the country as a whole needs to start uh, working on it now uh, so that we are able to take uh, action and steps, uh, you know, immediately uh, so that the impact can be seen uh, in the coming days. Yes, and, and so the other part, of course, is the mining sector. Now, I believe that some part of, uh, you know, mining for local purposes has been initiated. Uh, are you hopeful of opening that up that sector at least to a certain extent this month? Uh, we have done it, in fact, to a large extent. All the people with, uh, uh, you know, with, uh, uh, with mining leases, uh, most of them are allowed to mine now following, obviously, the social norms that are uh, that have been asked to uh, but export has not been allowed because we share a long uh, border with bangladesh and bangladesh is a big market for us in general uh, but we have not allowed the export part but apart from that uh, for the local consumption for the local factories and even for uh, you know trade within the region uh, we have relaxed the norms to a large extent Okay, the other aspect, Mr. Sangma, that I wanted to speak to you about was uh, this unfortunate, you know, series of incidences that have emerged from rest of the country of racial, uh, you know, racism, racial attacks on, on people from the Northeast in the light of, uh, you know, coronavirus essentially, uh, you know, coming from China. Uh, you know, have you spoken to the other states in terms of uh, taking strict action in these cases? And, and in general, how do we deal with this problem? Yeah, I think uh, it's very unfortunate that uh, these kinds of uh, incidents uh, happened in uh, so many parts of the country. And, uh, you know, immediately, uh, like uh, almost all the other chief ministers of the Northeast, we immediately wrote letters to all the other chief ministers of uh, the country, asking them to immediately act on such uh, cases. I personally, in fact, spoke uh, to, uh, you know, uh, uh, three, four politicians and leaders at the state government, uh, members of parliament in specific uh, areas and constituencies where we got to know about the cases. And I'm, I'm very thankful to them because they took very prompt action and people who were responsible were, uh, you know, uh, were caught. Uh, I think this is, uh, this is something that really uh, we need to all, uh, you know, grow up, I should say, you know, and this is the kind of... Uh, the way the uh, you know uh, situations like these leads to this kind of racial discriminations is, is very sad and really I should say unacceptable. And I think uh, it's good to see that uh, you know the political uh, group and the administration and the police have acted. I can only urge you know the citizens of us of our country that really in these times in these difficult times uh, we must all come together and we must fight this together 
and these kind of incidents doesn't really help. Yes, absolutely. It's unfortunate, you know, and it's unfortunate uh, that we have, uh, uh, um, you know, such kind of incidences even uh, at other times. It shouldn't happen at all. But for people to react like this towards their own countrymen in times of a pandemic is even worse. Mr. Conrad Sangwa, thank you so much for joining us, uh, you know, and speaking to the viewers of Mira. Now, really appreciate you taking the time out. Thank you, Dhanvi. Thank you so much.